Hi, welcome to online tutorial videos from JCBRO Labs. For more information and to download the model of this video, you can visit us at www.jcbrolabs.org. Uh, <coughs> we also provide online training, help in technical assignments. We also do freelance projects based on data science, Python, embedded system, machine learning, uh, electrical system, etc. So, if you have any such requirement, then you can let us know by contacting us through our website, which is www.jcbrolabs.org, or you can also mail us at jcbro. Uh, you can also mail us at info at jcbrolabs.org. Okay. So, let's continue with today's uh, video. So, today we will talk about how to design a inverter. That means how to convert our DC signal into an AC signal. And specifically, we will be talking about a half bridge inverter. Okay, so uh, this inverter is also a category of a converter technique. So in uh, in the category, uh, okay, when we have a conversion from DC signal to AC signal, right? That is known as the inverter. Okay, so when we say about AC signal, so don't confuse like we are also always talking about this sinusoidal kind of signal. Okay, so AC signal means we have a alternating current. So alternating current means it could be like this, right? It could be like this or it could be like this as well. Okay. So all these are AC signals, right? So uh, today we will talk about uh, how to convert DC signal to an any specific AC signal and that to this and there is another way like uh, we can convert this uh, sinusoidal wave that is a separate issue okay. So <coughs> uh, generally in electrical circuit bridges are used uh, to convert this AC signal to uh, this DC signal to AC signal and today we will be talking about a uh, half bridge. Uh, half bridge converter or half bridge DC to AC inverter. So in half bridge DC to AC inverter we have uh, these batteries or you can also have a split capacitor design. So a split capacitor design means we have a single uh, voltage source and two capacitor right. So these two capacitor will charge to the uh, let's say it is VS so these two capacitor will charge to the VS by 2 and VS by 2 and all the connection will be performing from here that means in other words this midpoint will be as a ground okay so this is plus minus this is plus minus for the uh, split capacitor design so right now we are uh, making like this so we have this as a ground you can say and here we have a uh, source let's say vs and vs Okay, now if we have a two switches, one switch is here and one switch is here and here is our load, you can say, okay. So the output voltage across this load, that means plus minus V out, if we try to draw it, uh, we will try to make a point here. So what happens? Uh, we will apply a pulse strain here that means uh, when this uh, we can say this is switch s1 and this is switch s2 so when switch s1 is closed the current will flow from this path right and go like this so at the out at the output we will get uh, this kind of waveform the time duration for which s1 is on so we can say s1 on now uh, when switch S2 is on and S1 off, right? So the voltage again the current will flow like this. So the uh, it will be opposite to the previous one. So we will get a voltage like this one. Okay. So we can connect this point. Similarly, again, so, so here we can say S2 is on. So similarly. Uh, this cycle will repeat itself S1 on when S2 on, S1 on and S2 on. So by this, this is very simple, by this we got a AC signal at the output. So this is a V out signal, right. So when S1 is on, we are getting this one, 
output voltage equals to Vs and when S2 is on we are getting opposite direction minus Vs okay so we can label it it is plus Vs and this is minus Vs so uh, this is how we have converted DC to AC signal okay so uh, many may have confused like uh, how to convert the AC signal then uh, we will be covering that part in our next video uh, in that case we need to apply a PWM signal or we can say sinusoidal PWM signal on this S1 and S2 and there is a specific processor for that okay so if you want to know how to generate a PWM then we have created a previous video and just prior to it like how to generate a PWM signal in Simulink you can refer to it okay so this is very simple example now further instead of this S1 and S2 uh, like uh, these are the switches so we could have a BJT or the MOSFET or the IGBT as the switch so typically it is an electronic switches which is available uh, as electronic so now we will try to make or we'll try to simulate the same circuit in Simulink okay so let's start with the Simulink okay first make it saved let's create a new model go to bank model and then we will make let's first save it uh, half bridge simulink okay so first of all we need a voltage source right so we'll search for the voltage source so we got this one yeah dc voltage source so let's make it little zoom and uh, let's make it two. So let it be our default value as hundred or hundred. Okay. And now we need uh, switches. So let's use MOSFET. Yeah. So MOSFET uh, are generally preferably used or generally IGBTs are used. So we can use MOSFETs. Okay. So let's rotate it. Control R. Okay, here it is. And you have one more because we need two MOSFETs. Okay, so that is fine. We need to. Oh wait. Now this point will go to here, and this point will go here. Right. And then we will be needing, um, yeah, one pulse generator. So it is available in source. So we'll need a pulse generator. Remember, we need to apply pulse to um, gate. So let's connect it. And amplitude is uh, one. That is fine. We are generating S power pulses right now. So we'll select this pulse width as 50 okay and then we'll connect it here and remember as we said when this switch is on this switch is off and when s2 is on s1 is off so if we have one we could have a two uh, pulse generator which are 180 degree apart or we can have a not signal we can apply a not in between these two so that is available here mm, and we can use this not symbol here it is right and let's rotate it and we will give here as well and the output of this node will go to the another gate okay so when this uh, MOSFET is on at a time this will off and when this is off this will on so now we need a load so we will be needing RLC branch RLC so let's search for it okay here we got it series rlc so let's convert it to r only and let's have a resistance of 100 ohm okay so you can put any resistance uh, because that is acting as a load and let's rotate is as well okay so a little bit shift this side okay now we will connect this to this one one point and this one through here okay 
as it is seen in this graph so it is connected exactly one point is connected here and another point is connected here now we'll need because we need to measure the voltage here so we need a voltage measure right okay that's it yeah here it is voltage measure so we'll be able to need this semi space voltage from here okay now we need a power gui to assemble these circuits here it is so let it be continuous and the output will go to the scope okay so let's sync and the scope okay that's fine okay let's run it for one second only and for that we can increase this pulse with uh, period so let's uh, have a period of 0 0.1 right so 0 0.1 means we are using uh, 10 hertz signal exactly so now let's run it okay so it's done let's see okay here we are getting a perfect ac signal so remember ac signal ac signal doesn't means like uh, uh sinusoidal signal only okay that is a part of an ac signal as well. so we can change uh, the width of it so let's select to two okay come when s1 is on it is plus 100 minus 100 plus 100 and minus 100 okay so we can change to uh, this value to 0 0.01 and let's save it and let's run it again okay yeah here it is higher okay higher SSC. okay so right now it is a kind of a plus minus pulse strain now in our next video we will learn uh, how to generate our sinusoidal pulse signal okay or uh, we can say a sine wave inverter that is also known as a uh, sine wave inverter design uh, so we'll be try to make this sine wave inverter using this half bridge circuit okay so i hope that's it for this video thank you further we also provide online training help in technical assignments we also do freelance projects based on data science python machine learning embedded system etc so if you have any such requirement then you can let us know by contacting uh, us through our website which is www.jcbrolabs.org or you can also mail us at info at jcbrolabs.org okay further if you uh, if you have any suggestion or any doubt then you can let us know by commenting below this video okay so that's it for this video thank you